that whether it's my IT or SRM, it's going to use that same process designer in the back end or the same PDT AOT. Okay, that was uh, we're, we're 15 minutes through. We're halfway through. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense in just building a really basic process, having go to SRM and having it created. I want to show you something else. Actually, maybe I'll, I'll be in here. Something else we do. We actually have a script on this, and if, if you ask nice to write answers and they ask me nice, I might actually get you the script. This, says, this script is saying, based on the number of incidents that come in, if there's more than three, create a problem. Now, how many times have we been asked to do this? And the standard BMC answer is there's really not a good way to do that. We prefer to have problems created manually based upon somebody seeing some common incidents. Uh, but for those of you that disagree with our answer, process designer can do this. And basically, when I start this, I'm going to go, let me, hopefully this comes across right. When I'm building my process designer, I have the ability to do a count operation. This is when I start. I'm going to click on this button. Here are some pre-built queries we have in Process Designer to say, based upon this criteria, I want to do something. So a number of incidents raised with the same surface, service within a time frame, I can use this as a criteria. And so we did this. I created, I created a process that said, based upon the number of incidents, Use, raised with the same service within a two-day time period. If there's more than two, I want to create a problem. And so over here, I have created two incidents. And they have hit that particular process designer uh, task flow. And if I look at my process tracker on my second incident, we'll see so far how many incidents today. Um, there have not been more than two, so we've just been completing the incident. We have not created a problem yet. I'm going to go ahead and create one more incident. So it's, um, let's, let's go back to Mary. We'll let her have, report it a second time. Problem with email. She's going to select her email service. And we'll put in impact and urgency. And if my process flow is working today, when I hit save, it's now going to see that there are more than two incidents today. You can see up here there's a message that tasks, task got triggered. And if I go look at that, now we went this bar. We said there are more than two, and now we created a problem. So if I went over and looked at my problem console, I would see a problem there. It's not linked to the incidents, but the problem is now sitting in my problem console. I've been assigned to a problem manager. They now know to look at it. Oh, darn, I wish we had, I wish we were unmuted, because I would ask for, who, who knows what's wrong with this process? Anybody have an idea what's wrong with this process? So, I said count is greater than two. So when my fourth incident comes in, it's going to create a problem. When my fifth incident comes in, it's going to create a problem. Six incidents, so I did this badly. I should have said count equals three, or I could have said count greater than two and count less than four so I don't get those multiple problems being created. So don't follow my process exactly, but just know that that is available as well. I'm just going to check questions really quickly now. Um, is process designer to be used by the business? Sure, absolutely. It might even be easier for the business than fighting with PDTs and AOTs and trying to figure out the templates that they have to drag over. Oh, wait, the template's not exposed. Oh, wait, the field's not exposed. So actually, um, I would guess business people would find process designer easier to use than the AOTs and the PDTs. I've also heard, I haven't done this myself, but I've heard our professional service people say there have been some very complicated processes that they, they could not have done just using PDTs and AOTs they needed to use Process Designer for. So it's a tool for the business, but it's also a tool for intense development. Um, is a designed workflow creating remedy objects behind it? The remedy, um, it's not, so Process Designer has its own set of active filter links and stuff. It doesn't really create those. It creates um, data in forms that it checks. So like, for example, if you do an approval loop, waiting for an approval, waiting for an approval, it puts that data into forms, and it has workflow to check those until the approvals are, are set. It does absolutely um, create objects like incidents, problems, work orders, and things, but the... Um, uh, the 
Sorry, the, uh, it doesn't need to, I guess I would say it doesn't need to create business rules because it has its business rules and it's using data to drive that, which is really nice. Um, somebody was wondering about the updates on the service request of using Process Designer. Does it go back or does it use the the um, does it does it go ahead and update? And I haven't actually tried that. I, I don't remember. We can try that really quick with the uh, service request uh, that I just put in and see if it's going to go ahead and update it. And then the last example we're going to look at. Let me just go ahead and show all the um, the. I know we have so many chat and Q&A things. Um, how did I tell – oh, that was actually really good, Jeremy. That's a good question. How did I tell the Incident Management Council to use the incident process I just, uh, I just used? That's done in a place, a place called Honolulu. No, um, uh, let me find the right place. There's a Abydos process mapping form. And I got to there. Of course, this is going to depend how your system is configured, how your entry points are configured. But in our case, in our demo systems, I have over on my menu here, under Process Designer, I have Process Mapping Form. And so I have some processes here that are going to tell me when to use this. So creating incidents for problem, I have just used it every time. I didn't limit it to just certain kinds of incidents. So that any time an incident comes in, go ahead, and, oh, and, and the incident assign, is status is assigned, go ahead and do that. If I create an incident in the status in process, it will not hit this. So you fill out this form, and this form says, when am I going to use this process? If I wanted to use it for all assignments, I could clear it. In this case, I say only if it's assigned, but then I'm going to use it on every incident that comes in that's assigned, I'm going to run that process flow, which is very relevant to our next one, which is change tasks, because I created another rule in here that said if my categorization tier, my opcat is change. I'm going to use this change tasks process. So it's a great question, Jeremy, even if it didn't come in into Q&A. And if I look at change tasks, and if I remember where I stuck it, this is where naming conventions get so important. I can view that process. I right-clicked on it and hit view process. All it's doing is task one, task two, and an approval. So I did this for a customer who wanted approvals and tasks. I didn't want to have to redo the approval engine to tie it to tasks, so I just did it in, uh, in a process designer ta uh, flow. And let me find my change window here. Well, that's incident, but that's okay. We can go ahead and create a change from here. So, like I said, they wanted to do approvals at the task level. I did not want to repoint the approval server to, ta to, the, to the tasks. You know, we frown upon that in BMC. So test change, if I do the categorization, if I set it to change, it's going to hit that very simple process that does two tasks and then an approval, which means it's going to attach those as tasks to this change record. So I come over here and I look at my task. I have task one, task two, and an approval task. Could you have done this through task templates and group task templates and done it through, you know, Having your change template auto-attach tasks, absolutely. But I wanted to show a more uh, automated way where I didn't have to pick a particular template, but I just used data within the change ticket to drive that particular task. So that was a great question, Jeremy, and uh, thanks for asking that. But the, um, in terms of available before 7604, um, while the company we bought it from did sell for versions before that, in the BMC world, we're now only supporting 7604 and above. Um, as we've repackaged and re-released it, we aren't, we aren't releasing the older version anymore. So, um, so it is strictly in terms of the newer. And again, we, we were going to go back and see if that incident, we're just about out. We have a couple minutes here, though. Let me see if I can get back to my incident console. Let me see if I can open this up and what happens. So I think the question was, as this moves through the process, if I get this resolved, will it automatically update the status out in service request management? And I just don't remember. Somebody thinks it doesn't. Um, done. Monitoring. And that to fill out anything else? I think that should do it. So it's in resolve status. And does that change out here? Um, if I go and you know, look at uh, open and draft statuses again. 
still showing up there. Yeah, so I'm going to look at all, just make sure I'm refreshing my view. It doesn't look like it's updating the status, so that may be something that needs to be done, is that we need to pass the variable back to update it, and I, we can check on that more or write answers. We can follow up on that after the um, after the demo and see see what we can find out about that. So sorry we don't have an answer off the top of our head for that one. Good question. We'll definitely look into it. Okay, we got a couple now a couple of minutes left here. And again, the three things I wanted to show was that you can use it in your front end for your service request management. You can have a kickoff automatically, like that incident to problem scenario where it just happened and based upon three incidents I didn't have to do anything. And then you can use it in change to actually attach tasks to that change. So that may be a way to get some process flow done. 